Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about The Patient, episode 4, titled Company. There will be spoilers, as always, so there is your warning there, and I'm going to get right into it now. We leave off in episode 3, where Sam has brought home a body, and <laughs> it seems like the person is still alive, and we quickly find out in this episode that they are, and Sam you know, was struggling to control himself, so he just brought this guy back. He's like, I usually don't bring people back to the house, you know, usually just kill them. Um, which is weird because all we've seen from Sam so far is him bringing people to his house. First he brought Alan to his house, now he's brought Alias? I don't know what this guy's name is, something like that. Um, <laughs> Elias? Anyways, so he's brought this guy back and he really wants to kill him, like really badly wants to kill him, which is obviously why Alan is there to convince him to stop killing people. And I just, I've kind of gone all over the place to as to how I feel about Alan's emotions because I'm struggling to understand them. At first he was like, not eating the food and I didn't understand why he was doing that. Like I get like, okay, maybe he's gonna be poisoned, but I just, I don't know, that was confusing to me. But then now he's like still so calm the whole time and I don't understand that. <laughs> he's like starting to reveal himself a little bit more and I liked how in this episode we got to finally see or hear what Alan is actually thinking because I think they've done a good job of kind of showing us how he feels and him just being like very anxious and scared just through what we see from his facial expressions and while you know he doesn't really talk much while um, Sam is away but finally now that he's talking to this other victim um, we are getting to learn a little bit more about him. And he, he says something funny and um, the guy, the other guy that's been kidnapped, he's like, well, he seems to trust you, you know, he's not gonna hurt you, right? Because you're his therapist. And then Alan says, well, he doesn't seem to fully respect the patient-doctor relationship. I just thought that was quite funny. The show has a little bit of humor, which I appreciate, but it's also just kind of terrifying. And I'm thinking, especially in this episode, I'm like, oh my gosh, for the first time, we get to see Sam at work outside of this house. You know, we really only have seen this sort of lower level of Sam's house. We haven't even seen the upstairs. We haven't gotten to see really much of Sam's life outside of this room and all we've seen from Alan are just a few flashbacks in each episode and then you know we kind of saw what led up to him getting kidnapped by Sam but it was quite terrifying seeing how he's a seemingly normal guy outside of being a serial killer, you know, but he seems very normal and just kind of has this normal job and everyone thinks he's just a normal guy, people like him at work, but he does not want to go to work. And Alan, which makes sense, he says, you need to do something to distract you from this um, temptation, I guess that's not the word that he says, but compulsion, is that what they're calling it? Um, yeah, but anyways, Alan says, you need to have this distraction. So Sam's getting super anxious at work and he ends up calling his mom so that he can talk to Alan. And his mom is just doing what all moms do, except in a very much more intense situation. You know, she's like, you need to listen to the doctor. <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh, please stop talking. You aren't helping, I don't think. But. Anyways, Alan, again, it's just so weird. I guess he's a therapist and he's trained in this sort of situation and he's, I'm assuming, been doing it for a long time, but he's just so calm in what is like the most intense situation. Sam's just like, I can't do it anymore. I need to come home right now and I need to kill him. And it's like, oh my gosh, I just, I, I'm not somebody that yells and 
life too often, but I feel like I would just want to be yelling at him, just like, no, unacceptable. Um, but goodness, Alan is very calm, and it's understandable how Sam is kind of halfway listening to him. But the mom is just so weird. She's just like allowing all of this to happen, but she doesn't seem to be afraid of Sam. She seems to, you know, love him, and it's like she doesn't agree with what he's doing, but it's like, it's just like he's, I don't know, doing some little tiny mistake over and over again. She's like, it's like he's, I don't know, cheating on a test or something, and she's just like, now Sam, you can't be doing that. That's not very good. But it's like, no, he's killing people. What? <laughs> so the mother is just as terrible. We, and Alan asked her about Sam's father, and we don't really get much more information on that. And he says, Sam says that, you know, it's all my father's fault or whatever. And I don't know what that means. We know that his father was abusive, but just because somebody's abusive doesn't mean they're gonna, you know, just because he's abused doesn't mean he would end up killing people. So I feel like there's definitely something more with his father that we don't know about quite yet. But I think the conversations between Alan and this other victim are very interesting. And one of the things that was the most like profound in this show so far, I was just like, whoa. I, I listened to the line and then I was like, oh my gosh, wait a minute, holy cow. Um, <laughs> but anyways, they're talking and the guy in the closet is just kind of like, um, you know, can you give this message to my family if he kills me? Um, I don't really know how that's gonna work out. It's re They really are making it seem like this guy's not gonna make it, which is kind of sad. And it's even more sad after this line. And he's like saying, you know, what to write on the note. And he says, dear mom and dad, I love you. And, and then he's like, is that good? And then Alan just kind of takes a moment and he, he's struggling to talk because obviously that's kind of the same thing he's sort of thinking. I was thinking like, okay, he's gonna have this long message, kind of might be boring and overly emotional, but the way they did it was so good because he said, the guy in the closet's like, is that good, do you think? And then Alan says, I think, and he's struggling to talk. He says, I think that's the main point. And, you know, at first it was like, okay, but then like a few seconds later, I'm like, wait a minute, oh my gosh. And it's just like, that's what it's all about, you know? And really this show is about him, you know, that's it. Like, there's nothing more that needs to be said. He loves his son, even though he's had some issues with his son, and he loves his wife, and like, Sam's mom, she loves Sam, and Sam loves his mom, so, I mean, that's what life's all about, right? It's just about loving people, so it's so weird. Like, I did not expect something that deep to be in this show, but that is the main point, and he's saying <laughs> of the letter, but, like, also about life. It's just like, whoa, that kind of blew me away, but anyways, back to the horror of the show. So we have something that's been happening in almost every episode is Sam has this large coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. And first of all, that could be enough to make you be a serial killer, having like seven of those every day. Every, almost every scene he has one, I'm like, that's too much coffee. Like, you'd be like, Ooh. all jittery all the time. It makes sense. Now, not to kill people, obviously, but for him to be like so like anxious all the time, it makes sense. But anyways, in every episode we, not everyone, I, but most episodes so far, Sam's gone into the bathroom and it's been like a whole 30 seconds he's in the bathroom and we're hearing it and Alan's hearing it. And I'm just thinking like, okay, now this is definitely gonna have to come back because we know that every time he goes into the bathroom, it's 
it takes at least 30 seconds probably and it's because of that huge coffee he drinks so at some point Alan I feel like is gonna have to use that time to escape or do something you know because at some point by the end of the show he's gonna have to try to escape I don't think Sam's just gonna let him go or maybe he is and then he's gonna kidnap him again for some reason but anyways that's something that's happening and I feel like that's just that whole sort of scenario of him going to the bathroom in almost every episode is something that looking back at this show and months after it ends or years even later I feel like that's something people will remember so a funny little thing that's in the show but as the episode comes to an end um you know Sam comes back home and Alan is like you need to go see your ex-wife which is really a strange thing I was kind of starting to think that he killed his ex-wife but now I guess he didn't but it seemed like maybe he did but anyways he left to apparently go see his ex-wife but it was a very close call he almost killed the guy in the closet because I don't know why Alan like I get why Alan wanted the noise machine off but that was a very close call he could have at that moment just went in there and not been able to control himself so that was a little bit of a mistake on Alan's part but I get why he wanted the noise machine off but anyways that's about all for my review of episode four let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen as this show unravels you can like subscribe comment and share if you want but whatever you want to do it's up to you. Thank you everyone so much for watching and God bless.